Hello, everybody, and welcome back to TBO. Uh, welcome. welcome. <laughs> was there anything else to the intro? Or was that it? I was thinking, and I couldn't think of anything, so we're going with that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so this one's been a long time coming. Uh, Black Widow. Yes. Who would have Who would have thought this movie would finally release? Yes. Te- well, it feels like you know the movie should have been out after Civil War. Should have come out. Yeah, but yeah, we'll get to it. I have questions, answers that get answered, and many, many things. But ultimately, Dan, what do you think of it? It was a very enjoyable film. I enjoyed it a lot. It was nice to be back for the cinema for the first time. That might have helped my experience. Ah, so you went to the cinema the first time. I've been to the cinema like four times prior to this. <laughs> and, and it's still nice to go back. Yeah, so we've both seen this in cinemas. We both weren't willing to shell out 20 quid on Disney+. Plus. No, that's so much money. This. Also, that's not a better experience. It's just a worse experience or more money. I mean, for me, maybe it would be better, good because big screen surround sound. I suppose, yes, I suppose with, with for those who with, have a very nice TV and surround sound Very systems, nice setup. Yeah, very nice setup. Rather than just sitting on your phone watching it and for twenty slowly. quid, twenty quid for renting and for then, twenty quid, and then coming out in like four months for free, free on Disney Plus if you want to yeah. have it. So, I mean, ultimately, do you think it was worth the money though? Yes, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, it's Marvel. I don't Marvel doesn't disappoint. No, this one ultimately, I had a lot of fun. Enjoyed it. It's very samey but different and that. Yeah. Y- you get the vibes, don't you? It definitely you has that definitely Marvel, Marvel template to it, but it's got a twist to it, sort of. Yeah. Especially the start. The whole start threw me off. Oh, what, the dark tone of it? and the Well, just, that, just the whole style of the, the intro. Oh, yeah. Just Before we off. get into anything, spoilers. Yes. I don't know why you wouldn't expect spoilers in this. It's I imagine we'll put spoilers in the title. Yeah, I might trick people and go, unspoilery movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, you will have the whole movie spoiled for you. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. Before you get angry at us because we spoiled the movie, we're warning you now, if you don't haven't watched it, if you haven't paid 20 quid for Disney Plus or gone risked COVID for Marvel, then yeah, spoilers ahead. Dan, absolutely. tell us your thoughts on the beginning. Okay, so the whole beginning sequence completely threw me off. The whole, the fact it was a very long sequence from the start. Yes. Cause... I didn't expect it to be that long. I was so confused. I'm thinking, yeah. why is it still going? Well, it's trying to set up, so basically it sets up the family dynamic where it's two kids who you find out later are Natasha and Yelena. 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 Uh, And then the dad, David Harbour, who's Alexei Stokov and... uh, The Red Guardian. Yep. Uh, And Melina Vostokov. I'm butchering these... um, It's fine. It's fine. People learn to do with it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just not going to refer to their last names. I'm just going to do their first names. It's easy. Fuck. Yes. Um, what do you make of yeah. Black Widow having, uh, having blue hair? Didn't bother me. I'm it sure it bother, bother a lot of. Bit. I'm sure it will bother a lot of people, but I think it just sets up that she likes dyeing her hair at a young age. Why not? Yeah, yeah, sure. Why not? It, that's my explanation. I'm sure a lot of people are going, "Why is the feminist agenda? Why in the '90s would someone be dyeing their hair blue? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> like, what yeah, does it matter? Just enjoy the film. Yeah. The, and then it's basically they're in a they're playing. She falls. One of them falls over. The youngest one scrapes her knee. The mom comes in, and goes, "Hey, I love you and whatnot, and be strong." And yeah, don't. I was. The thing is, at the start of this whole scene, I was so confused what was happening because I thought that one of them was Black Widow. I thought the one was I thought the younger was. one. I thought the younger one was. That's why I was. confused. Well, I think I, I knew Yelena's her sister. Yeah, I knew that, but I I I was kind of trying to figure out. Would they be doing it the other way around to trick you? But then I was like, no, she's the younger sister, and I was just like, well, yeah. Yeah, I was okay, just so confused. That's... Why did Black Widow look like like a boy? I know, maybe assuming gender in this day and age, but they still look like it. Yeah, it didn't bother me. It, it, it threw me. I mean, yeah, it, it, it threw me off. It, it's, you it's ultimately fine. sit. You ultimately sit down in it, and yeah, I mean... it, yeah, it's fine. It just threw me off. I was just so confused. Yeah, until they shout Natasha, and, and I was also so Natasha. confused why how, how happy they all were. Well, yeah, that's that's the premise because it's like um, they are a happy family despite the fact that it's a setup by the Russians, Soviet Union, Soviet Union, to infiltrate America and act to access Shield documents and, or something like that to steal something from Shield. Yes, because that's 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 a thing that I spotted that. I, I caught a glimpse of, but I didn't realize until like it, it was like kind of just passing by. But they are being chased by Shield in the. Place. I did notice that as well, and I was wondering why it was Shield. I I oh, thought it was because Alexi was a superhuman. Mate, yeah, or had well, this, that... uh, what super superhuman? Sorry. But yeah, no, he he he's ending up steals something from a base, and then 
burns it all to the ground, and then it's revealed that oh, he's taking the kids that who who he's been given to pose as like a fake family so that they can get into the U.S. and everything. Uh, with the mum and everything, she gets shot whilst they're yeah, doing yeah. their their plane sequence escape route, which I found a lot of fun. I quite like that chase sequence. I think a lot of the action was very good uh, in this film, yeah. apart from maybe the final third act, third act. Oh, what messy CGI and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't know. Didn't know it just kind of fell flat for me a little bit. Mm. It wasn't as entertaining as the rest of the film, the final bit. But we'll get to the final bit as we kind yeah, of recap. Well, as the we film. go on, we we can jump around if we want to talk about stuff. Yeah, yes, if it relates. Um, but yeah, I, I, you get your first look at Alexi being super strong because he throws a boulder or something out of the way of the plane, uh, and then sniping people and all that. So yeah, I, I thought then, I, I like the um, bit. Where he's kind of hanging on the plane, and I'm assuming he just flies the entire way to Cuba, hanging on the plane. I he probably gets in. I'd imagine. <laughs> I, I don't, don't know. He might do. <laughs> I can imagine Alexi doing that. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it was, and then it's ultimately that he then gives his kids or the kids that were with him over to Drakov, the That's big it, yeah. bad uh, of this film, uh, and then they basically get taken to the red room. Yeah, and then it goes into a very dark credit sequence i was so confused there's no moment i'm so confused about this is so unmarvel to have this what very dark nirvana cover just to have a credit scene at the start yeah where the mid credits were at the start of the film not in the mid credits <laughs> yeah and then if oh yeah if you're looking for there is one end credit sequence i'm assuming people know this if they're listening to this to one of you yeah well you might still think if you're stupid and going into it or you just want to hear us talk about it and you don't care about spoilers there is one end end credit scene at the very end. Yes, yeah. but there's no mid credits, I believe, right? Uh, no, it's just didn't... black credits at the end. <laughs> yeah, it's just ends and then it goes down and then there's one credit. Yeah, so yeah, because it's instead it's at the middle, which I actually liked. I thought that was very good. However, I did get uh, Captain America: The First Avenger vibes, where they had that montage of him just breaking down Nazi Germany. Yeah, I thought it was I kind mean... of similar situation, and I was. I didn't expect to go to that dark though, because it was very gritty in terms yeah of like show- it's like tr- human trafficking like it, yeah it's, but it's like showing human trafficking I mean, yes, that's what's right. I don't like human trafficking I like, I like the sequence I came out yes, wrong I get, I get that I wasn't implying but maybe you do who knows it's 2020 you can 2021 you can like that if you want I don't think people are allowed to like that well you're allowed to like it but you're gonna get judged for it if you <laughs> you're gonna get arrested <laughs> you'll get cancelled on twitter that's the most you'll come from it Oh no, that's alright. That's, right, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, and then we cut to the present day or Civil War present day after Civil War, and Natasha's being hunted down by William Hurt. Yes, uh, uh, Ross. General Ross. General Ross. Uh, and she's being hunted in a building, but then we get the super spy fake out where she's. I mean, that was obvious. Of... Yeah, she's on the toilet on a boat. Actually, uh, one hotel. thing I have seen this movie quoted to is, is as a long episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Maybe. It's been a while since I watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I do kind of get it, but I like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so... Well, that's no longer part of the MCU, Dan, so get out of your head. Although it might be. <laughs> no With of multiverse of madness, they could all tie it back in. Um, but yeah, so we then find out Black Widow goes to live in a caravan, and she has a friend. Yes, who I was She may or may expect- not have slept with. Oh, is that implied? I didn't or, realize that. I don't know. It was implied that they're very flirty with each other, so maybe. I mean, I think Natasha's always been flirty with everyone. Oh, yeah, because she's fucked like half the Avengers. <laughs> she's or she's at them. least kissed most of them, because she kisses Captain America. She kisses... Mo- I think she's kissed most of them at this point. Or at least... I think it's two. Had... She's kissed two. Least, yeah, I imagine. <laughs> That's not most of them. That's two. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. There's a lot but of Avengers very... nowadays. <laughs> well, she's she had a thing with Hulk. She had a... She's kissed Captain America. She's, I imagine, done something with hand jobbed Hot Camp Barton. <laughs> I don't think that's happened. Before, before the wife and all that. Yeah, they, yeah, they were bored in a subway at some point. They must have done some stuff in there. They were bored in those um, vents that they ha- hung out in whilst they were escaping Budapest. We finally learned about Budapest. Yes, I was, I was hoping for a bit more, though. I was actually hoping maybe a flashback of the actual fighting or something. Well, we learned that basically Natasha Romanoff killed Drakov's daughter in a bombing. Yes, an attempted kill Drakov. Yes, and that is her basically thinking that she killed Drakov because she used a little girl, 
his daughter as bait to confirm whether or not he was there. And they blow up the building and she assumes that he's dead. And so that's her red room closure down. And then um, whilst that happens to get out of Budapest, her and Clint Barton as a trade deal, if she helps take down Dracoff, she gets extradited to the U.S. and becomes a shield agent. Or yeah, whatever. yes, it, it, she gets her. So, she gets her ending. She wants. Yeah, and then so she does that. They have to escape from that, and then they spend like eight weeks or something in a shooting oh, no, their days. way out. Oh no! Yeah, sorry. Two, couple, just two days in the couple, vents. Couple weeks, I think. Two days in the vents or whatever, and then they basically have a shootout to get out of it. So I don't know how that relates to aliens in Avengers, but. Well, I know Hawkeye does have the the moment saying you and I remember Budapest very differently. True. So imagine it doesn't relate to aliens at all. <laughs> well, we don't know. They could have been scrolls. Hey, yeah, they might have been. However, Marvel could wreck on it. This has a premise that I personally really hate, which is a dead a dead guy going back to life. True. I hate that premise. It's so overdone and such lazy writing. I mean, technically, I I didn't hate it. I don't think it's the worst. I don't think you do... technically they they do make a point of it is. She doesn't confirm the kill. She got comfortable, I think, when she got offered the shield thing. Yeah, that is true, but it's, it's still it. the same premise, though. It's, it's just lazy yes. writing of it. the but dead guy done... comes back to life. Well, he doesn't technically come back to life. He just never dies. It's just no, but you know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, we didn't yeah, actually yeah, die. Yeah, yeah. He escaped somehow. I think it's more annoying when they actually you see him die, and then they come back. Yeah, I yeah. It's even worse. Annoying. Whereas this one's where it's like, oh, she thinks she's killed him because she killed a little girl. So she's just basing that on. I can forgive it more because she thinks also, she's... Also, this is, story isn't closed into this one film. It's not wasn't ages ago. Yeah. It's more... It's not so bad. If if they said he killed, she killed Drake off, maybe she did. I'm not sure. Well, maybe... she's never... It's never been... She just has read in her ledger. That's all she ever says. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so basically then we move on to uh, her sister, who's all grown up and Yelena. kicking it. I love this character so much. Oh yeah, she's a lot of fun. I I, I, like I, I genuinely believe she's a better character than Black Widow. I think she's more clumsy than Black Widow when she's not with the gas or when she hasn't got because basically what happens is she's been tra- tracking down this scientist who's created these red vials which are there to deactivate the wind, uh, the red room programming or whatever. And so she basically is programmed to hunt them down, cr- accidentally gets the vial cracked in her face. Yes. And then, but she's already killed the person who is, I think, a friend of hers or at least someone she knows because she does panic when she sees that they're dead. I think she just uh, panics and she killed somebody because. Uh, no, but honest- I think she also mentions later on that she knew her. Because she oh, was working for Dracov or something. Um, and they, they knew each other or something like that. But maybe not. Um, but yeah, she gets undeprogrammed, basically. Yeah, so... And then so she sends the vials that are left to Natasha. Or or leaves them... Yeah, leaves them with Natasha to well, send no, to the She Avengers. gives them to the, the guy they both know. Well, yeah, but he's going to give them to Natasha. Yes, because, yes. Um, And Natasha's meant to give them to the Avengers, but because it's after Civil War, the Avengers are disbanded. So So what did so what did you think about this kind of premise of actual the vials and everything? And the mind control. I don't hate it if I think uh, I don't think they ultimately end up doing much with them, to be honest. I think it's just a plot point or a MacGuffin just to get you from point A to point B. Yeah, I thought maybe, maybe also, they could have done a bit more with it. I mean, they could have explained. I think they do explain it quite well because the mum character has explained that it's all just genetic pheromones, and they have she has pigs that she's basically training to be like she can stop them from breathing if she tells them to. Yeah, to like to that. essentially remove all free will. That is the idea yeah. of all this. There is no free she's will. Basically, gene- yeah. So essentially, that's what the Black Widow pro what well, the Red Room program, or whatever it is, the Widow program, or whatever. Yeah, they're the all widows, called. aren't they? All of them. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I think ultimately the MacGuffin is kind of like, oh, well, it's just a gas that you spray in someone's face, and they just immediately get the. Uh, yeah, it's like it does seem a bit um a bit far fetched, even for Marvel film. I mean, we've seen gods take on titans. I don't think this is that far fetched in terms of a. Well, it's just like some, you know, some gas just a magical, instantly, yeah, just a know. magical fix. I do think maybe they should have done a bit more of an explanation as to why it works so quickly. Yeah, well, it, should, it, does, it should have been it a bit. Really explain why it works. It's just like, yeah, this thing works. It should have like a ramification of it hurts really, really badly to do it. So yeah, or at least of... something else happening other than just the eyes go red. Or there's a risk of them potentially just 
having their melt, brain melted or something like that. Yeah, like they're just, just dying. Just so then they, bit, they have a bit of um, bit of tension when someone actually does get deactivated. Yeah, just just give them a bit more excitement to the film. Mm. But yeah, I think ultimately it doesn't bother me. It it's overall a pretty solid like storyline. Uh, but yeah, then Natasha basically goes and finds her sister because she knows where her sister is because she got the stuff sent from there. But before that, she gets hunted down by Taskmaster because she has yes, the file. Yes, first view of Taskmaster, and I was I was actually really happy with this character at the start. At the start, Ooh, I okay, wasn't so okay. happy with the yep, reveal. Yeah, I know why. You, okay, do you want to reveal why you're not happy with it? <laughs> I feel well. The whole point of Taskmaster is that there's tasks involved. <laughs> well, they're meant to be the perfect copier of. Yeah, like this. they they mimic everything, and they're really hard to beat. And they they even set tasks, I believe. Well, we get we get Black Panther's claws. We get Hawkeye's arrows. We get Captain America's shield. We get probably Natasha Romanoff's attacks. We well, don't yeah, get Iron uh, yeah. Man, I believe um, when dis- they were fighting each other, they had the same fighting style, the exact same. Well, when she first fights them, because yeah, it's, yeah. It, she basically cop. Okay, so basically the reveal is that it's 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 the little daughter of Drakov didn't die in the explosion. I don't know how she didn't die. Like it, it was pretty. It's the same stupid thing of this person's come back to life again without an explanation. Hidden behind a table or something like that. No, and you sure? Most, no, no, you saw most, get blown up. Yes, but <laughs> hide, hide behind a table and the table takes most of the brunt, and her face is burnt off, and she's. Horribly scarred, although still Hollywood scarred, so not too bad. Yeah, yeah, o- only half you, a face. Never half, so very pretty still. You've still got to have horny boys go. Ooh, okay, maybe, but no, maybe. No. <laughs> and you know that. <laughs> <laughs> the sad fact is, no one's going to see your dancing you just did there. No, <laughs> it, well, maybe one day we'll do video. We'll see my but yeah, so I didn't. S- I. <laughs> To be honest, I didn't see it coming because I wasn't expecting the daughter to be dead <laughs> and come back. So, but it, it's basically the daughter's been mind controlled by the dad because the dad's an asshole and he's yeah, just a horrible person. Yeah, this dude's fucked up a lot. Oh uh, yeah, I definitely I appreciate all the dark tones in this film. Yeah, it, it gives For a Marvel a... movie. It does very well with the dark. It kind of reminds me of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier dealing with the darker stuff. Yeah, and uh, even another moment. I know we're jumping around here, but another moment that I liked is when um. Alexi meets up with the two, with Elena and Natasha oh, yeah, in the helicopter. They, they basically break them out of prison. Yeah, so we will in, talk about that scene in a minute. Well, it's in the trailers. You can, well, you don't know why they're in a Russian. Yeah, I actually war. expected that to be the final, the final battle. No, I figured the, the, the white giant suits, I mean, debris but... that's falling from the sky was the final battle. I mean, you never know. You never know. Although but... they do end on a scene f- shot from the trailer. They do. Yes. And that pisses me off every time they do it, because why add it in the end of the fucking film? It's Natasha basically looking off as a truck full of um, General Ross's agents come up to arrest her, but she somehow escapes, even though she says she'll deal wow. with it. Wow. And um, Yeah, that's true. How does that happen? How has that happened? I don't know. I think they reshot the ending because they needed to probably make it tie into how they get to a civil uh, Infinity War. Because they even show her, her dying a hair like two weeks later. Well, no, they show her in the process of dyeing her hair at the beginning. No, no, so I mean, like, you, you see her with dyed hair two weeks later, so she must have... Yeah, yeah, she's, yeah. she's running from them. Yeah, but she's just standing there waiting for them, and then she it just cuts, and then it's it's her going into a Quinjet to find Captain America and break everyone out of the raft, basically. Yeah. I don't get that, that bit confused the fuck out of me, because I think there's a shot in the trailer where General Ross gets out of the vehicles. It might have been cut. Maybe. I think they probably shifted some stuff around because it maybe revealed stuff that hasn't been out yet. Maybe. But then again, this is set between in, uh, Civil War and Infinity War, so what hasn't happened yet that you can't show? <laughs> yeah. Do you think this film suffers from pre- prequelism? I think this film suffers from not being released before Infinity War. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it suffers with prequelism. I think it just suffers in terms of where it gets released. I think if it got released before, or even during the Infinity War um, like before Captain Marvel. Yeah. Because I think Black Widow should have been the first female Marvel movie character to get her own movie before Captain Marvel. Because you could do Black Widow, then Captain Marvel, then Ant-Man and the Wasp, and then do Endgame afterwards if you wanted to do... Because it's... Because it's... you got Black Panther, I guess, but... We? No. Black Panther's before Infinity War. Is after Infinity War? Uh, Black Panther is before Infinity War. Because you have yeah. that massive scene in Wakanda. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then Captain Marvel is after Infinity War, so you get why Captain Marvel is coming 
to end uh, 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 end game because the end credit of Infinity War is Captain Marvel, basically. A uh, very quick but update. I... I was just thinking of um, people liking things or not. I just, I just popped in my head. Uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, it's currently setting at eighty one percent with critics and ninety four percent with audience. Well, yeah, Marvel fans are always gonna. Well, the reason why I'm interested about that one is because a lot of people don't like uh, female led movies in Marvel. They criticize it a lot. Mm. Because if you look at Captain Marvel... Well, no, people don't like Cap- Brie Larson. That's why they yeah. like Captain Marvel. <laughs> but Brie Larson's actually all right. I mean, people got a mis- like very agendered version of what they want Brie Larson to be, and she's not that, because she basically fights for female empowerment, and she's very vocal about it. Uh, Scarlett Johansson is also very female empowerment, but she's less figurehead as Brie Larson. So yeah. However, it She's does not... actually um, sort also, of trip. Scarlett Johansson, pff, men sexualize a lot more because... Yeah, well, Cat... I think she actually was talking about this at some point. That she actually played a part in the start of it in Avengers. Oh, well, I think she said that she, she doesn't think that she could have done a solo film before because it would have been a different take and it would probably be... Yeah, yeah, no, but I mean, like, at the actual start, the, the portrayal of a character she was involved with. Oh, yeah, she's very sexualized and a lot of the movies in yeah. the beginning because in uh, Avengers End, uh, Avengers the first one her zipper is right down to the cleavage <laughs> uh, yeah, in, Iron Man, in Iron Man 2 she's a biki- there's a shot of her in just bikinis because it's Scarlett Johansson and why would you not want to show off <laughs> and, she's, and she's wearing again very tight latex and all, that's the best hair in all of the Marvel movies uh, in Iron Man 2 <laughs> um, are you telling her something about your type surprisingly I would have thought all the other ones would have been but no that Curly red hair, dark red hair is surprisingly the best hair she's had in all of them. Because all the other ones look fake. It's just true, isn't it? Weirdly enough. Yeah, all of like the weird wigs and it just like it's I don't know why, but enough maybe apart from um, Endgame. Yeah, that the the red and white where it's slightly dying out, where she's dying it back to red again. Yeah, so her natural red hair is coming back. That's the question though. With the blue hair and the blonde, is that her natural hair color is blonde, and she gets it dyed red? No, or is it's, her natural it's hair red color red? She dyes it blonde. Maybe. No, because it's coming out red, but there's still blonde tips on it. Mm. And then get I don't know. So I, I wasn't looking at the child know. that much, Dan. <laughs> uh, but no, but the point I wanted to make um, it kind of stops the uh, stereotype of saying men don't like female led movies. Well, no, that's just a narrative that people push if it fails because it's a boring movie. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's okay, Wonder Woman did really well. Wonder Woman two really shit movie gets tanked. It's just if the movie's not good, people don't care. But you can push the female. Oh, men don't like women because it fails because of that. But no, you just got to make a good female led. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, uh, yeah. There's always an agenda on either of these sides. You can, if a female movie does really well, it's female empowerment and it's all crazy. And why would we care? Because it's like, oh, it's a really good movie because it's a female movie. No, it's just a good movie. Just judge it based on if it's a good movie or not. Don't judge it based on the gender. Yeah, so... um, Like, men's movies suck a lot of the time, and women's movies suck yeah, most of the time. The only trouble with sometimes... It can be either way, but I notice it more with um some some female-led films, is that the woman is powerful because she's a woman, not because she's done anything specific, particular in her life. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the Captain Marvel problem in that film. Yeah. <laughs> She's got the Infinity Stone in her, but it's, it's oh, she stood up to the bullies as a child, and she kept standing up to all the bad things in her life, and then a song plays that's very female and powerful. Yeah, it's, it's got problems, but ultimately I, I like to Captain I, I, I don't think it's not too, it's not too bad. It's not, it's not so bad as some of them. Some of them is like it is quite quite out there. Of well, Wonder up. Woman's very heavily female empowerment, and it doesn't do it well. Cause well, second she one, the first one. Second one. Yeah, the first one's all this, right. Yeah, the first one's fine, but the second one it's very heavily trying to be like a female empowerment where it's yeah, 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 yeah. Female I actually think strong. Black. How do you think, I think Black Widow compares to um, Wonder Woman? I like it more. I like it more. I, I, I uh, people are going to get me by Marvel bias here, but I like I Wonder Woman. Film. I think Wonder Woman suffers from the time it's set in because I don't really like that time period. Yeah, yeah, that's what you mean. And then again, I don't like Wonder Woman two's time period either. I think I think the the ending of Wonder Woman falls flatter. For me than this, I think Wonder Woman's got a good first and second half, and then the third half just falls apart because the message is just trash after that. Because it it could have been, uh, I think that was Warner Brothers interference though, because they wanted a big CGI monster. Whereas I think Patty Jenkins' original plan for it was to just have it be no one as the main. Yeah, villain. yeah, yeah. It was just the 
war and she right. couldn't stop or she couldn't stop it but basically the war stopped because of all of the stuff that happened naturally in the war mm. where it became a truce and then nazi germany would have probably come up and but i think warner brothers wanted the big cgi battle at the end so they kind of forced it on it yes but uh let's get off warner brothers and dc because we need to talk about black widow all right so um what did you where think did we get out to prison break we were up to well, no, I, 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 we jumped forward by that one. Then let's talk oh. about um, Natasha and Yelena's relationship in the film. Uh, I think it works. I think it's one of the most genuine ones we've seen. Yeah, it feels a lot. I, I liked a lot of some of the humor moments as well. Of she kept calling uh, Natasha a poser. Yes. So in the film, Natasha is called out for doing her classic Black Widow pose of the <laughs> one arm down on the ground and one arm stretched back whilst one leg st- stretched further. F- to the side and one leg. Yeah, I like the, the hair flick. I don't like. I like that moment. That was, that was good. And then they had the the callback to that later on the film when Yelena where did the she same does thing. it, and then she's like, "Ooh, gross! <laughs> I don't like that." <laughs> I thought she was going to say, "Oh, I see why she does it," and she's like, "Nope, that just sucks." So it's in character. Yeah, I like I'm that. really good. Uh, I'm I think my su- I think my surprise character that I really liked is uh, David Harbour who's Alexi. Oh, that's a great character. Just, I think th- just those two ass- characters. Yelena and mm. uh, Red Guardian. Don't get me so. wrong. I like the mum character, but the mum character is meant to be a stilted, emotionless robot, basically. She basically is. Yeah, she's meant to be just... Also, uh, okay, let's just get on to fan theories that turned out to be completely wrong. A lot of people thought the mum was going to be Taskmaster. Oh, do you know what? I think I'd actually prefer that, for that to be the reveal. <laughs> yeah, because they kind of do it, because it kind of is the reveal of the mum is the one who turns the red room on them but then she regrets it and then turns against the red room yeah, I thought yeah that was yeah. kind of rushed yeah that, that whole the final third act isn't great in this film but mind you that's it's... a typical marvel 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 trailer <laughs> so many films I don't think it's terrible like but i just that th- there's bits and pieces that fall apart when you do think about them ultimately i just think it suffers from being having to tie itself into infinity war yeah, I, I think... Because they kind of have to wrap it up so that she gets away. Yeah, that's then... true. I also think there's a lot of pacing issues in the third act. Some moments feel really I long like, and then some feel I like the reveal of the the bad guy has the pheromone that stops her from being able to attack him. Oh yeah, I think that's great. But that... she, she already knows about it, so she's just secretly trying to get him to break her nose. What so did you get about the, what about the cutaways during that final third act? Because there, there was a cutaway saying like, oh, by the way... Oh, you need. This is how you uh, do all of this, and I yeah. think it, it's fine. I don't hate it. I would have preferred if it wasn't there because. It... I think I would have preferred it if they revealed it beforehand. But then I guess you don't get the reveal of her trying to do it. Well, I don't see that. I don't see what what it adds to say. Oh, yeah, you can't. You can't stop breathing. I don't. I don't see why you would add that whole scene. Whatever you could just have um, Natasha work it out there and then. True. I, it, I do it doesn't think... really add much. You, you just kind of cut if... it away and broke it up and just kind of made the scene not fluid. Yeah, I think... I don't know. I think you have to kind of do the cutaway reveal that she already knows the information, so she's just been toying with him to get to the point where she can do it. But then I think it does take away from her character. If she... But then again, why would she suddenly figure out how to... Maybe you could have done it... I mean, it's not hard like... to figure out if it's in your nose saying, oh, by smelling their pheromones. Again, oh look! Yeah. Let me just break my nose. Isn't that pretty obvious? I thought of that before I even saw the cut, the cutaway. I think it would have been be- maybe better if he, she couldn't control what she was doing when she was around him. So she yeah. lost control. So maybe if they'd explain it as she lost control of being able to do it, so she had to get him to punch her because she could still talk, but she couldn't like physically harm herself because right, that yeah. was part of the pheromone. If they if they'd done that, that would have made more sense. So getting him to physically harm her was the way to do it. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd prefer that too. That, that, mm. It gives a little bit more tension to it. Because yeah. as soon as you get the cutaway, you kind of lose that whole tension of the whole scene. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with you on that. Um, But yeah, there's some serious stuff that then gets the Marvel treatment of having a cutaway joke that kind of lessens the impact of the heavy stuff. Yeah. Because you have, you have the whole bit on the helicopter where Alexi's finally been rescued, and they have their awkward reunion where they hate him because they he gave her up to the Red Room to get trained as assassins, and then they basically go, "Hey, we had our uteruses removed," but they yeah, do it I, in a jokey way. I don't think it was that jokey. Uh, she's like, "Oh, it's so goopy and slow." It's just, uh, it's no, but, no, but he he was like that, but they were very serious about it. No, she's kind of jokey about it. I don't know, maybe Yelena. I missed that slightly. She's kind of joke. Well, she's not joking about it. She's saying it, but she's saying it in kind of like a playful, 
yeah, we had our insides ripped out, and it was just like, oh, very. Do you not think it's like a bit sarcastic, like saying like, yeah, oh yeah, I, I, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. it's crap. It was fine, you know. I was like, oh, no. but sarcasm is a form of joking, Dan. True, but there will also be so, a sign of like being really angry at somebody. My thing is, I want to see if people get upset about that scene as much as they did about the scene in Age of Ultron, where Black Widow reveals that she's had her bits of removed because she can't have a baby with Bruce Banner because she's like, I he can't have kids. She's like, well, I can't have kids either because they removed my uterus, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But everyone got really upset about that scene because she says she's a monster, but she doesn't say it in the context because she's had her stomach removed and she can't, well, not her stomach, her uterus removed because she's a Black Widow. She's saying it because she's got trained as a killer. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, yeah, I didn't get that one. But people got really upset about that because they misinterpreted it really weirdly. And it really pissed me off because I was like, no, she's not saying she's a monster because she can't have kids. She's saying a monster because she got turned into an assassin. <laughs> 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 and she's killed many people. Yes, as it's revealed. Yes, as Alexi lovely, lovingly states, your red, your ledgers must be covered in blood. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> and he's so proud. <laughs> I th- I thought I would get annoyed by them taking the piss out of that character. I liked it. Well, yeah, I liked it. I thought it would annoy me, but <laughs> it just worked. The only thing I think they could have done a bit bit of a better take on it was, you know where he's talking to his daughter in the room and she's like upset because it's revealed that Natasha didn't think any of it was re- uh, real and she didn't like the... She, did, she doesn't want to be a part of this family because she thought it was fake and she just wants to get the job done so she can leave. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then she storms off and she doesn't want to do it and then the dad comes in and tries to talk to her um, and gets finally gets through to her by singing the song at the beginning where in the cars it's playing and it's like her song and whatnot. American Pie. And then, and then he stands up because there's a big explosion because the mum's revealed where they are and comes to get them. And then uh, he stands up and he gets like, finally, a time to fight. And then he gets shot by a billion. I actually like that. I like it, but I think it would have been kind of cool to have a fight scene there. Yeah, possibly. Mind you, then I guess the whole point of this was like... Is to get captured to go to the Red Room, basically. Yeah, yeah. But I thought it was quite so, funny though. I was like, he got shot once. I was like, this is fine. He just gets shot repeatedly. And then just gets tranked, basically. <laughs> yeah, we like to... But yeah. A lot of the humour, I thought, worked in this film. Yeah, it's a very... I think a lot of it works. Like, don't yeah. get me wrong, I think... I, 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 I said there are some things, as a couple of plot points and maybe some pacing issues every now and then. But then again, that's most of the movies. The, if you think too hard about them... Yeah, As yeah. long as they don't annoy you in the film, I found, I'm fine with it. Like, if it works whilst I'm watching the film, I think the only times I ever hate it is when it slows the movie down to a point where you start thinking about it. Or it's yes, so I didn't blip. get that, but I did get some moments where I was like, okay, this is kind of dragging a bit. Yeah. When I think there's, there's, a, there's a lot of exposition, lot of nothing happening, with... just just chatting for about five minutes straight. It's like, come on, do something interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, ultimately, it, it's revealed that Taskmaster is the daughter of Drakov and that Natasha is sorry and wants to do right and then they basically do the explosion the mum basically has to blow up the i I like the taskmaster versus um the dad fight but i think it got cut up a bit too much yeah i I would like to see it just play out play out yeah because i think it's like you see 30 seconds of it then it cuts to another perspective and then it cuts back again and it's like just let me see a russian old fat man who can't fit in his suit (laughs) properly fight a trained assassin who's basically knows all of Captain because I would have thought there would be a moment where he's she's using like Captain America's like battle tactics on him yeah I mean I know these and then starts countering them I would have thought that would have been a cool moment that would have been good but but again I think he's posing because he's never actually fought Captain America that's not that is true Uh, mind you you know it's a family of poses (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah, I think I think a good way of looking on how to do multiple fight scenes at the same time is Infinity War because I had two big fight scenes at the exact same time, but they cut away yeah. at the right points. So you can still yeah. have cutaways, just have it longer scenes, not so frequent. Yeah, definitely do make the impact of the scene. What then? Like put the stake of the. I have really long fight scene, like a cliffhanger bad... almost. Yeah, clip like someone's going to do something or something's going to happen or like someone, happen. someone's just been punched or something something big just happened so they're in trouble or something like that yeah and then like it. you cut away but, like, you hold attention uh, behind it but they are they do do that but they do it so frequently that it it's just too of, much it just doesn't like every doesn't time really he work. gets punched to the ground they cut away to it and it's just like okay yeah you could have kept going for a little bit longer yeah yeah uh, i think all the acting in this was very good i think the other black widows were kind of lackluster i think 
I would like to see a bit more from it. I don't think they're very good as assassins if they keep getting taken out. Well, they're, they're the training. Widow... They're training. They're not new ones. They are yeah, new yeah. ones. They're not old ones. But the ones that are on the field off with Yelena also kind of just get taken down like bitches because they fall off a building and they d break and die. I do like the moment where um that one gets the taser yeah, in her face. Yeah, that, that's good. Because he basically controls her to do it. That that was a good moment. There's a lot of I dark wish... moments in this film. For I wish they'd done more with that, though. Like, having him just start having them kill themselves as a, just a way to get out of Black Widow. Like, she has to do something. Oh, that would have been, been really that, dark. I, cool. I get that's a really dark moment for a Marvel film. But you do one scene like that, and then you do nothing with it. Like, he can make them kill themselves. Or what you so... could have done instead is even have the final climax. Instead of them freeing all of them, he's like, okay, if I can't have them, I control them. He just kills them all off. True. It'd be really dark. Yeah, because he just kind of goes out like a bitch. He just dies in a helicopter. Yeah, but if he actually killed them all, I know that's really dark, but that would have that would been insane. Yeah. I never want to be talking about that. Just the ending. The shock behind it. Yeah, I think ultimately you can always go on and on about 2020 hindsight and what you want to happen and what you wish happened. But ultimately you have to think about it in the context of the movie itself. And the movie does a good enough job with the way it does it. Yeah, and at the end of the day, you go to a movie to be entertained. Yeah, you're not... Well, some people go with a checklist of, hey, this, this <laughs> It must be this. No, but like, no, but most people, average people, would just go, okay, I'm going to go to the cinema just to enjoy myself. Just kill a few hours, all right? I know some people who are just going to see Scarlett Johansson in tight latex. Yeah, I know, but you're not going to get that in this film. <laughs> you get her in white latex, and then not heavily sexualized black latex later on. Yeah, yeah. Did you like the reveal of the, it's not the mum, it's... Natasha reveal where they do the switcheroo thing. I when I, when they meet. Drogon. I don't know <laughs> because I was like, oh, it's that thing from all the other movies where they've shown this facial recognition tech or whatever it is. Yeah, I, I mean it's it's very common in Shield. Yeah, yeah, and also in Captain America. Uh, Shield. It's, it's still Shield. Yeah, but it's <laughs> Shield but tech. I don't know. I don't know who has it. I don't know if the mum has it or Natasha has it. No, I think the mum has had it. No, 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 Natasha doesn't have anything. She has nothing on her. That's what I mean. So why was the mum having it? Well, mum has like everything. She... she has loads of stuff. She has comms in a, she has a set of comms. True. Well, she only has one set of comms. Yeah, well, that seems I don't suppose. Alexi thinks he's more. talking to Natasha and then it's turned out. Oh, that was great. <laughs> and then it turns out he thinks he's talking to them because he thinks he has an earpiece and then it's like, oh, nope, you don't have an earpiece. There was only one. <laughs> I love that character so much. I feel like... Yeah. Uh, uh, Elena and Alexi just stole the show in this whole film. Yeah, it seems kind of weird to have two, like... I guess they're trying to replace Black Widow at some point because she's... Well, yeah, dead. Elena is a replacement for Black Widow. Yes. Uh, As, she's even being called it? Black Widow in the comics. Shall we get on with the end credits? Yeah, let's go to the end credits anyway. So I think... I don't think there's anything else about the film we actually want to talk about now. We all, we can we Where would everything? you rank it in the Marvel? High Marvel, medium Marvel, low Marvel? I say it's in the top half. I'm going to say above average. Yeah, it's in the top half. But not, not super high. Yeah. I'd have to watch it again. We both have only watched this once. so Probably um, around probably around 12th, maybe. Which isn't a bad thing. It's just current estimates in my head. Well, I'm currently thinking. Well, that's bang on the middle if you're going 12th. Yeah, probably like 11th, 20, 12th, This maybe. is the 24th film. I, have to, I, have to, I, can't, I can't remember all the films off the top of my head. Under, under first impressions, I think it, it might even break top 10. I did really enjoy it. Uh, that might have been because I went and saw it on my birthday, but <laughs> uh, who knows? Uh, yeah, I did, I did enjoy it. I, it's I just some of the pacing issues that annoyed me. <laughs> it really did. Yeah, I don't... It's like two hours and 20 minutes or something. Like it's two hours and 13. Yeah. But it's think, just like I said, maybe... like, it's just the third act. The pacing of the third act didn't work for me. Oh, yeah, we never talked about the big sky ship. What do you oh, think yeah. Big sky I, how, Henry, how they've been... I, I mean, I called it. Straight away. Oh, really? Yeah, I call it. I thought under the sea. I no, because the radar could pick that up. It's in the sky. I was like, it even said it's above radar. I was like, oh, it's a, it's a helicarrier then. Well, it's not a helicarrier. It's like well, a you know what I mean. Like, it's it's, it's going to be a thing. Steampunk, steampunky, like, flying fortress, basically. And, yeah, it looked kind of weird to me when I saw it the first time. I was like, oh, just big rectangle square base that flies. I mean, you would have thought people would still found it. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't even have cloaking tech. That's what I found weird. <laughs> It's just this massive floating fortress that is slightly above the clouds, really. I suppose another thing behind having a massive floating red room, it sort of takes a little they bit away from it as well. They kind of explain it as being that because they think he's dead, they're not looking for him, so why would they need to hide as... Well, they're still hiding, but they're hiding without the constant like looking of the agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or whatever. I think it would have been better if it was in like a cave or something. 
like really deep underground, dark, gritty place. Because that's what the Red Room is. It's meant to be a really underwater. dark place. Underwater. <laughs> maybe, maybe even underwater, but I think it just needs to be somewhere that's really dark and gritty. Whereas in the, if it's in the it sky, under- it's like, oh, it's kind of cool. It's flying spacecraft. Well, I was thinking if they did it underwater, they could have it tie into Atlant- like underwater. If they have an explosion under the water, then the Atlanteans could be pissed off because what not. And then you could tie that into like Namor and shit like that. Or have hints towards Namor because you could have like a trident on the ground or something. Who knows? Just think if you did water, you could do more opportunities for sea stuff. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I have a fish swim past that's got like a little keychain that says Namor on it and then just go, ooh, Easter egg. But... Yeah, so end credit scenes. We we're going to talk about end credit scenes. Uh, it is... It's one of the, the short ones. Yeah. I was kind of questioning... Because basically it cuts to after an end game. Natasha is dead. Graveyard. Her sister Yelena comes out of a car with a dog. Because they were talking about getting pets and shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, Previously in the movie. And then I thought the whistling was going to reveal... Natasha was alive. <laughs> no. <laughs> because she's... Well, no, because I was like, oh, she's whistling, and then you just hear a whistle back, and it's like, what? And then Natasha walks out. And that was that was what I was thinking, because they were probably going to... Why would that happen? I don't know. <laughs> she's dead. You saw her die. <laughs> True, but it would have potentially tied into Loki and having variants. It I don't think like... they would have released that last year. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> but... That's just my mind, because end credit scenes, you can always... You're just hoping, you're like, oh, she's alive. Yeah, it would have been nice. But no, it turns out it's Val. Yes, Valentina. Falcon the Winter Soldier. Yes. Well, she was meant to be in this first. And then she yes, went into... so they had to kind of shuffle some stuff around, because, hey, look, the big reveal with this movie is meant to tie into the big reveal at the end of uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, and then... So, it, it, it implies that Hawkeye is the reason that Black Widow is dead. Yeah, so the question is, what do you think is going to happen now? I don't know. Is she signed on for Hawkeye TV show? I don't... F- well, she might be, but... It's not been revealed. It might be revealed later now that Black Widow's out. So I thought what might happen is she might be one of the villains of of Hawkeye, Hawkeye but like be sort of like a Lady Loki in a way, who is a villain but then turns out is a protagonist. Or is yes. an antagonist and becomes a protagonist. Because well, I... Yelena isn't a villain in the comics. No. But then again, they're kind of trying to make uh what's his face? Agent America or US Agent. His name. Uh it's bit, I think they're setting up Dark Avengers. Yes. So we've got we've got a Russian Captain America, we've got a US Captain America, if you wanted to, because you have uh, Alexei if they wanted to do Captain America but Russian they could do Alexi, but we've got US agents, so they're not going to do Alexi again. Um, I want Alexi to come back though. I don't care what it is. You... Make a Black Widow you... 2 with Yelena and Alexi. I'd be happy with that. See, I reckon if they're doing Armor Wars, which is the Don Cheadle led, uh, he goes and finds a bunch of people who have stolen Tony Stark's technology and stops them from using it to make Iron Man suits. I reckon one of the villains from that is going to get elected to be in the Dark Avengers by What's Her Face. Yeah. Then what do you think is happening in Loki? What happens in Loki as well? What Val turns up? Yeah, never knows. Might turn up in Loki. Val's (laughs) Val's at the end of that portal and the uh, the big mansion at the end of episode five. It might be her. It might be her in the future. You never know. There's probably Kang, but you know, or a Loki variant who managed. Yeah, no, but that's I thought that's too predictable. I I reckon I I reckon the reveal will be it's a Loki variant and then they defeat the Loki variant and then it becomes Kang. Probably, but I I don't want it because I think it will be a Loki variant. After seeing WandaVision, I think it will be. (laughs) And I don't want it to be. I think it will be a Loki variant but revealed to be Kang. Because then you get the best of both worlds. What if what if Loki is Kang? Well technically Kang is Iron Man in the comics. Okay. It's a very it's a variation of Iron Man, or like a descendant of Iron Man at, at some point. Because Kang has like multiple different um, generations where he plays different characters through time. And one of the variations is a young Iron Man or a version of Iron Man descendant or something like that. Uh, so if they wanted to, they could have Robert Downey Jr. turn up. Uh, I can confirm that Florence Pugh has not been on the cast list. Of Hawkeye. Nope. But yeah. I'm just trying to think who, what else we've got coming up that would reveal more variations of people to play the Avengers. I doubt it turns into anything. Maybe Shang Chi. Shang Chi Abomination, because then you get the Hulk. They could bring Abomination into it. Because you'd want a Hulk, so you'd have Abomination, probably an end credit scene where 
Val turns up and goes, hey, look, I know you're Tim Roth or something. And then you have uh, what's a face give him a card and he goes, hey, we need a Hulk for this. And then uh, what else you got? Iron Man, probably Armor Wars. Then... Oh, I imagine Har- Armor Wars might have something to do with um, Hammer. Well, maybe. Cause... I'd like Justin Hammer to return. Well, isn't I'm Justin sure. Hammer rumored to return in Armor Wars? Probably. I, I believe probably... something to do with Hammer is um, is involved in... Well, 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 it's all speculation at this point because I don't think anyone's been cast except Don Cheadle. So. Although I do think um, that the Ven- like MCU Dark Avengers is going to be very different. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my, my thing is, yes, we're talking about other Marvel properties, but that's because Black Widow, the only real change that you can kind of... The only glimpse of the future that you can really get. Oh, the only fun thing is the vest that uh, Yelena is wearing throughout the most of the movie is the vest that Black Widow wears in Infinity War and Endgame. I didn't notice that. Apparently that's that's a connection. So the last thing her sister gave to her is the thing she dies in, I think. Oh. Yes. That's, that, that that's was nice, something I read way. up. Yeah, it's nice that your sister gave you something and you die in it. It's no, real, but it's real, nice that you know, her sister was there. Technically. I don't know. With her. She finally found her family's dad. But that does lead to question why does the Captain America and Iron Man go, she doesn't have any family. We were her family. Because technically they are her family, but we find out in this film she does have her family, and they like her now. So, I they think Abomination is sh- part of it. Well, I'd imagine so. If oh, they're no, doing Dark Avengers. It's Scar. Sorry, Scar is part of it. Scar? Who's Scar? Son of Hulk. Oh. Battle World. Who knows? But, I mean, a lot of it's changed. I imagine a lot of it's changing already. I mean, Yelena's not part of it. I imagine Abomination will probably be get rolled into it. If they're going to fucking have him in a cameo for uh, Shang-Chi, they're probably wrapping it up so that people will remember the fucking Abomination exists in the MCU. So yeah. that they don't have to reveal a character that hasn't been in a movie f- since 2008. <laughs> they can go, oh, look, it was in this movie that you missed or watched or whatever. We we remembered this character, and you can now remember this character, so that when we reveal that they're in this property, it will be more interesting. Anyway. Black Widow. That is Black Widow. Um, I don't think I've got anything Would to recommend. Say. I would recommend. It's, it's, I mean, ev- everyone's going to watch it anyway. If you're a Marvel fan, you'll like it. Let's be honest. Well, it is set to break Fast and Furious' new movie record of post pandemic box office. I'm not so. surprised. It's, I, I, as far as I can tell, this is much more liked than Fast and Furious Oh, 9. this is far better than fucking Fast and Furious 9. And I liked Fast and Furious 9, but I don't love Fast and Furious 9. I like this movie a lot more. It's got a lot of heart. Uh, overall, characters. Natasha, good. Out of All 10? new characters. I'd go maybe an 8. I think I said 7.5. Yeah, around 7.5, 8. I reckon would I'd sit at not the best, not a high, high like a high movie. Maybe a couple more watchings and it will solidify as an eight. But well, the thing is, when you when you view watch, it can go up or down. <laughs> True. So, but we have to go on our I, first impressions. I do always go on my first impression, and then I have after rewatch. Does it degrade, or do you still enjoy it continuously throughout? Yeah. If you enjoy it conti- continuously throughout, then it's a good movie. If it deteriorates as you watch it, it can still be classified as a good movie, but it's just kind of wavering interest when you watch it multiple times. So I, I reckon this one, I'm going to go see it again, 100%. More in cinema? Uh, oh, yeah, I think. Well, you've got limited tickets, haven't you? So you're fine. Yeah, I, I, I'm i whenever. So uh, when, I, when I've when come off for my holiday, I'll be going to the cinema to watch it again. <laughs> um, we can get your recommendations on TV. I mean, you watch it again. Yeah, I'll recommend. I'll, I'll say if it, it's worth the second viewing, or even paying the twenty quid and watching it as many times as you want on Disney Plus. Um, you can add yeah, it that... to our section. Recommend do, recommend don't. Yeah. If you want to find out what that is, go that... watch TFE, our new format. It's now started. Yes. Um. Yeah, that's been Black Widow once again. Pretty solid movie. Yeah. That. But that's it. <laughs> it's an enjoyable film. Next week, Loki. Oh my god, it is. Yeah. All Loki rumors and all Loki theories and all. Oh, it's Loki... gonna be great! It's gonna be a great one from episode yes. six. The only Marvel TV show that I've watched twice. Have you? And I've prob- yeah, watched twice. I've, I've I've watched every episode twice. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, I think I've watched. And I might watch twice. it all again before we do our review. So it might be you, the only obviously one that you really I watched like three this, times. You really like the series? Yeah, I did. But this one, uh, uh, anyway. Hey, that, we'll get that, to that's that next week. week. I have to look look forward to it. This week is Black Widow. We've reviewed it. That's our thoughts. That's our feelings. That's our emotions. We'll see you next week. Bye. Why did I pause that and not that?